What's the story of the Birkenhead drill, just as an example of... Because I think what's interesting about that is that you've got ordinary young people there doing extraordinary things. Definitely. Well, the Birkenhead was a, was a ship that was uh, commandeered by the, by the British government to move raw troops, new recruits, uh, to, to fight in wars in Africa. Uh, they had been a large contingent of them had been recruited from the poorest parts of Ireland and a part of the country that had been severely hit by the potato famines. You had starving young men who joined up as much as anything else to get a chance of three square meals a day. They get on board the Birkenhead. It sails to South Africa. It's nearing its destination. This is in the also in the second half of the nineteenth century. It hits a rock, and the ship begins to sink. Uh, they're in shark-infested waters. Great whites and all the rest of the horrors of the deep are awaiting any mammal that goes into the water. There are only enough boats, there aren't enough boats aboard to get everyone into a lifeboat. So for the very first time, the commanding officer, Alexander Seaton, a tall, strapping Scotsman, who's the, the senior officer, decides that the families of the men will go into the boats because the men were travelling with women and children, as was the custom in those days. And so the women and children were put aboard the boats and then the army used what's always been called funeral order to fill the remaining places in the boats, that is youngest first. So the, the youngest of the soldiers were then put in to fill the remaining spaces and those boats were taken away. The remaining men on board were told to stand where they were on deck and when the boat went, sank beneath them, even if they were still afloat, they were not on any, uh, for any reason to swim towards those boats because there was a danger that they would swamp those cutters which were full of women and children. And that is what they did. The men went down into the water and, with no exceptions, they did not swim towards the boats. There's a famous incident where the cutter with some of the women and children and it came back because the women were insisting that they go back and try and rescue someone and the youngster, Ensign Russell, who was uh, piloting the little boat, uh, was told that the father of one of the families was in the water beside them. He jumped into the water, insisted that that man take his place, which he did, and then Ensign Russell, who was 19 years old, was taken by sharks. Every woman and children on the Birkenhead was saved, and the cry, women and children first, which we now sort of take for granted, mm. is more properly described as the Birkenhead drill, and it was established by those men and boys on that ship that day. And the, the Emperor of Prussia, was so impressed when he heard the story that he insisted that an account of it be put up on the walls of every barracks of his army because that was the standard that he expected of his men. So those boys, men and boys, they saw it as their duty to make sure that the women and children would survive this situation. It wasn't a question of, I am stronger, I am fitter, I can fight for a place in that boat and I will survive. They saw it that the greater good was the preservation of the women and children and that's what they did.